loyalty and I love the Lord, let everybody let know everybody Spread the know. word around the world, this here more than doing shows doing Gotta doing switch shows. your life up, your life. that's the only that's way you the grow only way you Switching grow. up my ways, I had to get my mind right All about the kingdom, it ain't about the limelight What would you do for Jesus, I ain't talking Klondike Switching up my ways, had to get my mind right Gotta be hot and cold, can't straddle the line, no Fishing for these souls, I'm ready to find one Calling on the Lord, he coming on time Thanks, sir, James the 99, let's double around Son, wanted the limelight with them sound bites. I thought the Lord cut my winning books like he playing jokers in them dark nights. Was a little wheezy trying to make it rain out of steam like a broken train. Only doing music just to entertain. Now I'm leading people to the cane. Look, had to refrain from distractions. Wanted attention just for satisfaction. Recognize life really more simplified when God saw my infractions. Get the map, put it on tracks. Life a marathon. I'm just running laps on the Peloton, burning calories and spiritually I'm burning fat. Giving the burdens that held me down, pulling me deep like I'm fitting the drown. Now I swim in blessings with victory Cause it's grace abounds We born to win, ain't fitting to lose Life or death, what you fitting to choose Never been perfect, but always progressing But still, people wanna put us on snooze Switching yeah. up my ways, I had to get my mind right All about the kingdom, it ain't about the limelight What would you do for Jesus? I ain't talking Klondike Switching up my ways, had to get my mind right I bring the fire, but you never seen her. I testify, I don't need a subpoena. They want my soul, better go to Korea. I love my dog, just like I'm Peter. Gotta protect him. I made the call up with just like I'm rapping. I know we left here, now we back together, but I guess that is better now. Later than never, like, uh, what's happening? I'ma need y'all quit asking when. Me and my wife gonna have some kids. Right now, we just practicing. Practicing. Teacher said, quit rapping, man. That gonna hurt my average. I said, thank God I ain't average. Yeah. Do the most, but I do a lot. I'ma make a toast, cause we still alive. No big, I feel like pop. I shoot the shot. I'm coming in.
Crossover Church, are you ready? One day spent in the temple is better than a thousand anywhere else is. Prepare your spirit. For the Lord seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth. Remix is ready. Are you ready? Then let's go. Everybody clap your hands. Get up. Let's go. We ready. We ready. We ready. Let's go. Crossover Church, we ready. We ready to give a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to give a praise? Y'all ready to two-step for the Father this morning? Come on.
Yeah, come on. Yeah. Light me up, send me a fire. In your prisons, I consume a full desire. Holy Spirit, bring the flames on the fire. As I unleash my words of a must acquire. I'm your temple, I wanna be overcome. You feel well, like a hand in the glove. You my consuming fire, you're my God of love. Listen upon me like a dove from above.
worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, God, for you coming in and having your way on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You guys know the words to this song already.
Ready to finish strong today? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. The Apostle Paul, he was writing to his mentee, to his spiritual son. And he was near the end of his life at the time when he was writing this letter to him. And he said this. He said, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I've remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Listen, y'all, Paul finished strong. I want to finish strong. I, I want to see everybody here in this room to finish strong. Listen, hopefully... None of us in here are at the end of our life almost like Paul was when he was writing this, right? But we all know that tomorrow's not promised to us. It's not. Life is short. And I know this season is super busy and hectic and we're running around. And we can forget like every day is a gift. You woke up today, you got air in your lungs. Your, your heart's still beating. You're here. This past week, I, I, I was at two different funerals. One was for... Uh, a, a beloved member of our church. 
Some of, some of y'all know him as Pops. He used to always sit right back there in the back on his red scooter. He'd roll in on his red scooter every Sunday. Pops was a, a, a great brother. Passed away, he was 79 years old. But even though he was 79 years old, more importantly than that is nine years ago, he had a new birth and he started a relationship with Jesus right here at Crossover. Yeah. And he got baptized with a whole bunch of his family in the parking lot on one of our big baptism days back in 2015. And his life was changed and he was a different guy. Every Sunday when he would come in in his red scooter and sit back there and worship and he would talk to me out in the lobby, he would leave church and, and ride his scooter from here all the way to the VA hospital. And, and at the VA hospital, he would visit veterans. He was a veteran himself and, and he would visit people and cheer them up and pray for them. He'd give them some tracks and some flyers and man, God was using that guy. We're gonna miss him. Pray for Pop's family as they're, as they're grieving the loss of him. Those of us in here that, that knew him and loved him. This past week, my wife and I, we had to uh, fly out to Los Angeles to go to a funeral to celebrate the life of uh, Melanie Roberts. And uh, she was the wife of Pastor Phil, Phil the Voice. She led worship here at our church a couple of years ago. Pastor Phil preached here that day. Uh, Phil has wrapped at Flavor Fest multiple different times, and she had a battle with cancer the last couple of years. And so, uh, man, it was tough. It was tough. Please pray for Pastor Phil, the kids. Pray for their church, Nations Church LA. Man, tomorrow is, is not promised. It's not. It's heavy sometimes. But you know what? You're still here today. I'm here today. I still got an assignment. I got, I got a mission on my life right now. And so do you. If you got air in your lungs and your heart is still beating, in Hebrews chapter 12, it gives us some encouragement of how to finish strong. And it says this, it says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. And how do we do this? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. The writer of scripture here, he's challenging us to strip off every weight that slows us down. And, and some of you have some weights today that are holding you down. You have some weights today that are holding you back. Some of you feel like you're drowning right now. And you know what? Before we go any farther in this service today, I want to pray for you. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor T, I, I feel like, man, I got some stuff that's holding me back. I want to finish strong, but I can't. I want to ask you to do something crazy. I want to just come forward. Come forward right now. I want to pray for you. Before we move any farther in this service, just come on down. Come on down. Step up a little closer so everybody can fit. A lot of people coming down. If you're worshiping online with us, just type in the chat, pray for me. If you're in the crowd here, I don't want you to just spectate. I want you to participate. I want you to just reach a hand towards your family that's up here that's like, man, I got some things that just need to break free of today. And if you're down here, I, I want you guys to just lift your hands and sign a surrender to God. We pray for you today. Father, I just come before you today. I lift up my family that stepped out, out of their seats today in front of everybody else and said, man, I got some things that have been weighing me down, some things that have been holding me back, some things that have literally maybe made them feel like they're drowning right now. Some of them are drowning in sorrow. Some might be drowning in emotional, overwhelming feelings that they're having right now, drowning in depression. Some people might be financially feeling like they're drowning. God, you know exactly what they're going through right now, what they're feeling, what their situation and circumstance is right now. Father, I pray you're just going to touch each and every person that's down here right now. God, I pray that they will be able to finish 2023 strong. 
and God, I even pray in the scripture, it talks about some of the sin that can trip us up. God, I pray if anybody down here is, is wrestling with some sin issues, maybe some addiction issues, and it's been tripping them up, and it's been holding them back, and it's been slowing them down, I pray in Jesus' name for freedom today. Freedom right now in Jesus' name. Break those chains. The break free. I pray for deliverance right now in Jesus' name. To touch them right where they're at, God. Give them exactly what they need in this moment. God, we love you today. We know that we can have freedom and we can finish strong only with your help. Not on our own power, not on our own willpower or strength, or, but God, only with you. God, may they lean in and rely 100% on you in these next few weeks. And I pray even at this moment, God, change is happening in Jesus' name. We pray all these things. Everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for Jesus today. Yeah. You could just give, give, give somebody a hug before they go and sit down today. Come on, give somebody a hug. Show them some love today. So grateful you guys are here. Look at the person next to you and say, welcome to church. We're going to get it in today, y'all. We're going to get it in today. I'm excited because we are starting a brand new series. We only got a few more weeks of 2023. And, and today we're starting a series called Finish Strong. Somebody say, Finish Strong. Finish For those worshiping online, if you just type in the chat, Finish Strong, type it in there. And uh, come on, make some noise for all the online people. Grateful you guys are tapping in today. Listen, uh, all of us, we got some race to run. We got some more race to run. So I, I'm not saying we're coming to the end, but we're coming to the end of a lap. And that lap of 2023. And we can get tempted when we're getting to the end of the lap that, man, we're tired. And, and, and we see, see the ending and, and we can tap out. Look at the person next to you and say, don't tap out. <laughs> don't tap out. Come on, these last couple of weeks could be your best weeks of 2023. Does anybody believe that? So these next couple of weeks, we're going to give you some tools and some resources and empower you guys to, to finish strong. Um, you can cut that music. I'm just going right into the sermon, brother. We're, we're, going, we're, we're preaching now. It's all good, man. <laughs> so I'm ready to roll, man. So we're going to talk about finishing strong in our finances. We're going to talk about finishing strong in our family. We're going to talk about finishing strong in our faith. Those are key, key pressure points that can weigh us down. And if we get entangled in some of the wrong things, man, it can hold us back. So today we're going to start with our finances. How many of y'all know this has been one of the most challenging financial years that our country has seen in a long time? Anybody felt that inflation? Yes, sir. Yesterday's price is not today's price, is it? I mean, everything has gone up from groceries to car insurance. Anybody seen them car insurance bills? I got two teenagers. Pray for me. Right for me and my wife, car insurance bills are crazy. Homeowners insurance, um, rent, I mean, anything you can name, it has gone up. It's much more expensive to live. And guess which city in the United States have the highest inflation rate in the country? Yeah, pop that up, pop that up. Look at that, y'all. We were number one. Tampa Bay, 7.3% inflation this past year. Not far behind us was another Florida city, Miami, and you can kind of go down the list there. But, man, we have felt it like crazy. Now, if you lived here before the pandemic, which half of you didn't, <clears throat> we love y'all. Welcome. Tampa was one of the most affordable places to live. And then Tom Brady came, the pandemic came, and the secret got out. That, oh, man, we can move to Florida. Like, it's cheaper, and there's not as much taxes, and the weather is great. And, oh, man, and did they come? <laughs> they came. And Hillsborough County, Pasco County, Polk County, some of the main counties in the Tampa Bay area, uh, the last three years were some of the fastest-growing counties in the United States. Uh, so there was some actual quarters 
uh, Hillsborough County was number one. Polk County was number one. Like, Pasco County was number one. So there was literally hundreds of thousands of people that were moving here. And so with all the demand, there wasn't enough supply. And so that's why prices started to shoot through the roof even faster. They went up everywhere, but especially here. And so uh, if we look at how expensive it got in the past five years, um, let, let's put that next one up. Uh, we weren't number one. We were number two. <laughs> but since 2017, uh, prices have went up 33.2% in the Tampa Bay area. Wow. I know that most of us in here are probably not seen a 33.2% uh, a, a raise in the past five years, right? So we're feeling the squeeze. Right? Because everything has gotten so much more expensive and there's, man, there's less money to do everything with. Right? So, so how do we finish strong when we feel weak? I'm going to talk about that today. This is an area that is a pressure point for so many of us today. And I want to encourage you guys, take some notes today. Um, write it down. Or if you haven't downloaded the Crossover app, you can download that. Type it in. And so all that news and all those graphs, they can sound bad and look scary. Right? But let's remember this. We're going to start right here and talk about this, y'all. This fact. Somebody say facts. God's economy is different than the world's economy. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. God's economy is different than the world's economy. How many of y'all know that? I don't know. I, I'm not convinced. That, that wasn't that great. I only hear a couple of y'all hollering like, like, man. There we go. Okay. Listen, family, I've been adulting now for over 25 years. That's a thing. And so uh, during some of the roughest economic seasons for me as an adult, I can kind of look back and trace what God did. And during some of the roughest years economically in the culture, God did the most miracles. God did the most miracles. I could go back and think and look. And, and when you're following Jesus, let me tell you, when you're following Jesus and you're faithful and you're doing the things you're supposed to, like you're going to notice that. Like God's economy is different than the world's economy. Uh, in 2008 to 2010 was kind of known as the Great Recession. And it was challenging here in Florida. If, if any of you were around back then, only a couple of you were. Um, but uh, it, it was a challenging time because Florida was built on tourism and it was built on growth. And both of those things stopped, right, during that time. The recession was a difficult time. And so, but during that time, 2008 to 2010, uh, Crossover Church, uh, we raised over half a million dollars to get ready to move into this building. And we sold our, and our, by the way, our church was much younger then and much smaller then. And, and God was able to help us raise that money. Uh, and we sold our old location uh, for the asking price in the toughest real estate market that Florida had ever seen. So miracles, y'all. Miracles. We, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be in this building. And even the past couple of years with all the extra costs and all the things going up, like, man, we've watched God be faithful, open up doors, take care of things. This has blown my mind. And I can personally absolutely testify like God's economy is different than the world's economy. And so before we dive into some of the practical steps to kind of help us finish strong financially, uh, we got to remind ourselves of this fundamental truth that it really underpins our entire existence. You know what that is? It's God's ownership. He owns everything. He owns it all. Psalm 24, 1, it tells us, uh, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. What in it? Everything. Every, everything, right? The world and all its people belong to him. So write this down if you're taking notes. God made everything and he owns everything. He made it all and he owns it. Like this includes our finances. So understanding that principle right there, that everything we have, it belongs to God, that helps us align, you know, helps us align with our financial decisions in his will. And so we got to remember, you can't take any of this with you, y'all. You just get to hold it for a little while. And so God calls us to be managers and stewards of it for a season. You know what that season is? That season is the dash between our birth and our death. We all got a dash. And that's the season that we get to hold this stuff for a little while. And so I want to ask you guys, take inventory. Have you been faithful with the resources God has given you so far in your dash? And I hope your dash 
lasts a lot longer, right? But have you been faithful or have you allowed like, like earthly desires and fear? Have you allowed some of that to guide your financial decisions? If we're honest, probably all of us at some different seasons have gotten off track. And, and so what's one of the first ways we can become faithful with our finances? Here it is, y'all. Put God first in your finances. Put him first, y'all. Put it first. It's that simple. But it's not that easy, is it? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, when it says the first of your produce, your harvest, that means the first of your increase. When this scripture was written, it, when a lot of the Bible was written, most people worked in agriculture. They worked in farming or they, they worked around it. So this, this kind of language of, of harvest and produce, a lot of times that's what people brought um, to the church to say, here, take this and use this for God's work, right? And so the first and the best is also referred to as the tithe. Anybody heard about the tithe before? If you didn't know the tithe, it's in the Bible. It comes from the Hebrew word, uh, mahaser, which means a tenth or 10% of somebody's income or their crops was given back to God. So I I'm curious. Anybody in here at some point in your life, you, you tithed before? A anybody? Okay. L look around the room. It's, it's a lot of people that at some point they've tithed, they, they've, they've given 10% of their income. Now, let, 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 let me ask you to be really honest. How many of y'all were afraid to do it? <laughs> you were like, well... I'm looking at the spreadsheet here, looking at my budget, like, man, I'm not sure how that's going to, like, make sense. Like, I don't know how I could give 10%. Um, man, to think about giving 10%. And, and notice, there is no inflation with God. It's still 10%, by the way. That, has, that hasn't gone up. It hasn't gone up, y'all. <laughs> but how many of y'all have tried it and did it for a season, and then you watch God show up and do miracles in your life? Anybody got a... Story, look around the room. There's a lot of people that can, can testify to that. And, uh, and, and sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint a miracle, can't it? Like, because you can start, like, rationing all, all these thoughts, like, you know, rationalizing with yourself, like, well, maybe that happened because of this and this and that and the other. And we can do that with a lot of things. But for me personally, I, I know for me and my wife, like, when, when we have been generous, uh, we've, we've been tithers since the beginning of, of our marriage, and we give above and beyond that. Um, so many different times, uh, man, we've noticed, like, that's one of the biggest areas we can see miracles in our life, like tangible miracles, because here's the thing, we can trace it back. We got a budget, and we can look at what the bills are, what this and this is, and then we can see, like, there's still money left over. How is that? Like, like how, anybody ever experienced that before, and you're like, that, that overflow, and you're like, man, like, you see God working, like, God's economy really is different than the world's economy, and, and you can also advance in a bad economy. Did you know that? Every time that there's been a rough economy, personally for me, and I know personally for the church, our church, I've watched our church move forward. It doesn't make sense. Like, you, you should see all kinds of impact and, and everything, but, I, but I've watched our church move forward. Why? Because new doors have opened. God, God showed us new information. There, there, was, there was new connection. There was supernatural things that happened. And so even right now, as we're getting ready to go into 2024, and, man, uh, the economy is, is challenging and debt is at record high levels. I just read this week that uh, uh, car payments defaulting are at the highest level ever in history right now. There's like 6 million people that are more than 60 days behind on their car payments. And, and, I mean, it's like, so you look at all those things, and, like, there's an election next year, and you know it's going to get crazy with that. There's war in the world, and there's all these things. But I ain't scared, y'all. I'm not scared. Because God's economy is different than the world's economy, and, and he's going to take care of us. And, and I believe there's going to be all kinds of new doors and new things he's going to show us and new things that are going to happen in 2024. And so look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. We don't have to be afraid, y'all. That's good preaching. <laughs> Come on. Somebody's excited, Pastor Christopher. Let's go. So one way you can financially finish strong these last couple weeks and maybe make a new habit right now is to say to God, you know what? I'm going to put you first. I'm going to bring my best. I'm going to tie these last couple weeks of the year. I'm going to watch you show up. Proverbs 11.25, it says this. It says, the generous will prosper those who refresh others themselves will be refreshed. 
And, and some of you in here, you have a gift of generosity. You love to help others. You love to give to others. You love to serve. Some of you have uh, a gift of, of giving. Um, so, so, some of you, like Melanie, at the, the celebration of life this past week that we are at in L.A., she had a gift uh, of giving gifts. And she had a gift closet in her house. And when somebody would come over her house, uh, she would always, like, know what the gift was. Here, I got something for you. And, and she would have something customized for, like, each person. Some of you, you have that gift of, of like, giving. And, and so right now, speaking of that, like, so many of you are running around looking for the perfect gift for somebody else for that thing that's coming up in two weeks. Some of y'all haven't even started, right? <laughs> you haven't even started your Christmas list yet, right? But, but here we are running around getting gifts for everybody else for Christmas, and we want to celebrate, we want to bless some other people and tell them we appreciate them. No, that's good. That's great. But I asked this a couple of weeks ago. What are you guys getting the birthday boy? Whose birthday is it? Who are we celebrating? We're celebrating Jesus' birthday. Whether you want to argue or not, well, he wasn't really born on December 25th. Like, just be quiet. Like, we're celebrating his birthday. He came at some point. <laughs> we're going to celebrate it now. Okay? So y'all don't got to get all into all that stuff, right? But we're celebrating Jesus' birthday. So, so I want to ask you, what are you bringing the birthday boy? What are you doing to honor him and further his work? One of the things that God has put on our church's heart to further the work of Jesus, not just on a Sunday or when we have a, an event or a service here, but to further his work every day is we're building a coffee shop in our lobby that's going to be open seven days a week. And so some of you might be, yeah, you can celebrate that. It's going to be awesome. I know that some of you guys here, you might be new. You might not really know what's going on. you got those signs out there. You see there's some construction. The lobby is kind of dusty and, and everything. Uh, that's what's happening out there. We're building uh, a space that's going to be open seven days a week where people can come. College students can come. Business people can come. Church people can come. Community people can come. And that space is going to be open. And we know, like, ministry is going to happen. People are going to be stepping into this building seven days a week, and, and they're going to experience God's presence. They're going to be curious about, man, I need to come maybe check this place out. Like, God is going to use um, coffee beans to touch people's lives, y'all. How many of y'all believe that? So this past week, we just passed another round of inspections with the inspectors. And so they came, and uh, at the bottom of each one of the posts that are out there, uh, they're cemented in now. The cement is in. Uh, they put cement in the stairways that are outside and inside. And so we're making progress. It's continually moving forward. Little by little, step by step, we're going to see that thing finished up. And so uh, this month, we had a goal. I shared it a few weeks ago. We're praying to raise $75,000 to help finish up the coffee shop in excellence. That we get that thing totally done in the next couple of months. And so I ask you guys, pray about how you can participate in that. Pray about, like, like, that could be your gift to Jesus for the work of Jesus before the end of the year. So pray about that. Listen, if all of us do something, there's a lot of people that are part of our church. Between the people that come to both services and people that worship online, if everybody prays about it and does something, you know, and sacrifices a little something extra, like, we could easily reach that goal. We could easily exceed that goal. And we're going to watch that coffee shop then. Here's the other part about it. It's not just going to do all that ministry during the week, but all of the proceeds from the coffee shop are going to go to Love Our City. And so we're going to be able to take ministry and outreach to a whole nother level. So it's coffee with a cause, y'all. It, it is. And so uh, if you want to give in the next couple of weeks to that project, um, use the rebrand tab uh, when you give digitally. If you give physically and drop it in the drop box or mail it in, uh, make sure you just write on the envelope or the check or whatever um, the word rebrand so we can know it's designated towards that. And so how many of y'all believe we're going to see God do a miracle? He's going to do it, y'all. He's going to do it. And there's people from the outside that are giving as well. I was at an event on Thursday, and somebody came up to me and said, hey, man, our foundation is writing you guys a check for the coffee shop this week. So I'm like, man, like, God, God, God does surprises. His economy is different than the world's economy. He shows up when you're faithful, y'all. I know some of you guys, you have some big financial decisions maybe to make even in the next couple of weeks. And, and look what James chapter 1, verse 5 says. It says, if you need wisdom, who do we ask, y'all? What kind of God is he? He's a generous God. He's not stingy. He's a generous God. He's going to give you that wisdom. He's not going to rebuke you for asking. Uh, how, how many of you are parents and, and you want your kids to come to you for wisdom, right? We want that. They usually don't, do they? Right? Not until they're really in trouble, right? 
But man, God is like, man, you're, you're, you're my kids. Like, come to me for, for wisdom. I want to give you guidance. And if we commit our financial plans to the Lord, asking for his guidance in, in our budgeting, in our investing, in our spending, in our giving, guess what? God's going to give it to you. God's going to show you the way. If you're taking notes today, write this down. This is a key part to finish the year financially strong, y'all. Create a solid plan to become debt-free. Notice I said the word solid. Because some of y'all got a plan, but it, it ain't that solid. It, it, you, ain't, you ain't following through with it. You ain't doing nothing with it. It's just there. But you're still going to the mall. You're still going out to eat. You're still getting DoorDash, paying three times the amount. What is, you know, you just go to the store. Come on. Listen, the reality is um, if you have some debt, you're not going to get it all paid off probably in the next couple weeks. But, but you, you can be, begin to set a solid plan up now to go into 2024 strong to be disciplined and on point, to get free, hopefully next year, uh, maybe in the middle of next year, right? Uh, especially if you don't add any more debt in the next couple of weeks during the holidays. That's what so many people tend to do, don't they? We overspend during the holidays. We, we see a gift and we're going to spend this amount, but we spend beyond it. And, and then we see some, some sales and some deals and we end up buying some stuff for who? Ourselves. You weren't even supposed to buy that TV. You weren't even supposed to buy that thing. I'm talking to somebody right now. Like, just, just come on. What you got is okay, right? And um, I talk about debt and over-leveraging in my book, Gotta Be the Shoes, and share some stuff in there as well. How many guys can agree that, that debt, being debt-free feels so much better? Anybody ever been debt-free? Feels good, doesn't it? Anybody ever been debt-free and then you got in debt again? <laughs> It especially doesn't feel good then. You're like, oh, man. Here we are again. How did we get here, man? And listen, it's so much better than just a good feeling. It's so much better than knowing, like, man, I'm not paying all this extra interest, right? Um, but, but here's what Proverbs 22, 7 warns us. It says, um, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Or some translations say slave to the lender. You can become a slave to your debt. You can become a servant to your debt. Because you couldn't wait for something and save up for it, you had to put it on a card, and now you're paying double the amount for it. But Pastor T, it was on sale. It's not anymore. <laughs> After you paid all that interest, you paid way more than the retail price, even though you bought it on sale. And that's how they get you sometimes, right? And so if you would just be discipline, right? Because you, you get all this debt and you're working more, you're stressing more, you're fighting more. Um, it can be a spiritual battle that can hold you back and literally make you feel like you're drowning. It can overwhelm you, y'all. Anybody been there before and it's like, man, it ain't worth it. The stuff is not worth it. Now, listen, there's all kinds of extra ways that, that, that you can try to knock down the debt, obviously create a budget. I'm just curious, how many of y'all got a budget in here? How many of y'all got a budget? Man, oh, Jesus, help us. I was hoping every hand would go up like I had a budget. Like some of y'all just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Man, got to get a budget. You got to get a plan. And, and, and if you are in debt, there, there's some things you can look at when you map everything out, what your expenses are and what your bills are. And you can say, okay, what are we spending on? And maybe there's some areas you could cut some spending down. Because how many of y'all have ever got to the end of the month? You're like, where did everything go? And if you add it up all the times you ate out, you're like, oh, my gosh, we spent $832 on eating out? Oh, man. But if you make a budget, if you're strict, if you're looking at all those things, and it doesn't mean it's going to totally change your lifestyle. You're, yeah, you're going to have to deny a few things here and there. Um, but, man, it, it can work if you make a budget. But if you're just, just, just sliding that card every time, or that's not even sliding anymore, it's tapping, you know. <laughs> Some of y'all fancy now. You got Apple Pay and all that for all the Apple people, right? And just like, just a, it's just a little, right? That's all it is. It's so easy, right? Uh, how many people have heard of the debt snowball before? Uh, so the debt snowball, you look at all your debts that you have, right? And you keep paying the minimum payment on all of them. But the smallest one that you have, um, you put extra money towards that until you knock that thing out. And then once you knock that thing out, you take the minimum payment on that and move it up to the next smallest thing and any extra money. And you keep, and it just kind of snowballs. And as you keep paying debts off, those minimum payments, 
that you were paying. You keep paying them, but you're applying them to the next thing up on the list. And quicker and quicker, it snowballs until you can knock things out and knock your debt out and you can get financially free. There's a lot of little tricks you can do. Look it up. There's, there's lots of stuff on, online, right? Uh, we offer Financial Peace University. Uh, shout out to Lee, Lee and Carissa. They, they did Financial Peace University this past year. And, uh, and we're going to do it again in the future. It's to help families get on point financially, right? So stay tuned. We're going to have other classes like that coming up in the new year. I also encourage you guys, create some other streams of income. You kind of kind of, got to do that nowadays, don't you, right? King Solomon, the richest man that ever lived, uh, we talked about him last week a little bit. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 2, he says this. He says, but divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risks may lie ahead. So on one hand, like God's economy is different than the world's economy. But on the other hand, we also have to use some wisdom because we don't know what's coming up next. But God can show you sometimes. God can show you some different investments, some different things to do that's going to help you for the things that lie ahead. So I want to tell you, if you're investing, like be careful, be wise, do your research, talk to people, get proof. I know a lot of people talk a good game out there. And people invest in stuff, and it's not even a great investment, and they lose their money, right? Um, so, man, like, talk to other people about it. Another way is to create, uh, create some other streams of income and start a business. Start a side hustle. Any, any, any entrepreneurs in the building? Man, we got a lot here across the All right. If you didn't know, like, we have an entrepreneur ministry here. We want to equip you guys and empower you guys. It's called Crossover Preneurs. And if you don't know about it, like, tap in with them. They regularly have a table in the center of the lobby. They're doing a growth group right now on Zoom every Wednesday night. It's free. You could tap into that. Uh, man, there's so much great wisdom in that group. People are sharing information. They're helping each other with their businesses, giving each other ideas. There's coaching. There's mentoring. There's all kinds of great stuff. And even a lot of that is organic, and it's happening. There's about 150 people that have been plugged in with the crossover preneurs so far, and I know there's a lot more. So we are constantly wanting to help you guys grow. We want to empower you guys to win. Um, curious, is anybody here like uh, just like a 1099 worker or they're just like a contract worker? That, that's like just what you do. Uh, if you were a 1099 worker, a contract worker during the pandemic, you know what? If you got COVID or you had to quarantine at any point, there's money that you can get back from the government right now. Because if you worked at a job and you got COVID or you had to quarantine, your job had to pay you for 10 days. Some of y'all know about that. You were like, you had COVID every other week. <laughs> well, that was my daughter. We just stopped doing that, right? <laughs> they caught on to it after a little while, right? But listen, if you were just like an Uber driver or a contract worker and, and you got sick or you had to quarantine, like nobody was paying you. You were out of, you were out of luck. But there's actually some funding the government's giving right now. It can, thousands of dollars people are getting it. So today, actually after this service, in classroom one, if that's you and you during the pandemic were that, we got someone to give you some sauce, some information on that. Anytime we hear about stuff that's legit, we're going to let you guys know because we want to see you guys be financially free. We want to see you guys grow in every area of your life. Amen? So write this down. Embrace a biblical mindset on money. Embrace a biblical mindset on money. If you want to finish this year strong in our finances, uh, we've got to adopt a biblical mindset on wealth. And that's, that, that's one of the things. We, some of us have a poverty mindset. We have a scarcity mindset. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying we have to have a prosperity mindset on the other hand. No, we can have an abundance mindset. You know what that is? That, that's a biblical mindset. And we don't have to be afraid because God's economy is different than the world's economy, right? Matthew chapter 6, Jesus shared this, and he reminds us this. Chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, Jesus said this. He said, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves can break in and steal, but store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy. Thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Most of us think about physical investments, right? And, and that's wise to do. It's wise to invest in a home, maybe invest in some real estate, maybe invest in the stock market, invest in a, a good startup, invest in a solid crypto project that's out there, right? Cool. But look at me, y'all. All that's still temporary. 
It's all temporary. And, and, and it's great, and I'm an advocate of like creating generational wealth, and so you can pass that on to your kids and, and your kids' kids, right? And, and that's awesome. But guess what? For your kids, it's temporary. For your kids' kids, it's temporary. All that's temporary. Far, far, far greater than all those investments is your eternal investments. So we always think about ROI, return on investment. What's my return on investment if I invest in this thing or whatever, right? But man, what about your eternal ROI? What are you doing? And that's what Jesus is talking about here in Matthew chapter 6. He's saying, store up your treasures in heaven. The work you do for Jesus when you serve other people, uh, when, when you're generous, when you give, when, when you share the gospel, when you encourage someone, when you pray for someone, like all those things, like guess what? That pays dividends in heaven. It does. I mean, the Bible even talks about, like Jesus said, like you give a cup, cup of cold water in my name, it'll be remembered. Right? And now we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. We don't know exactly what those dividends are. And, and I think God made it that way on purpose. And I've shared this before because I think if we saw exactly what we were getting, we would have the wrong motives and mindset. You know, like what if you could log in on your app, your heaven app, <laughs> and you could just go and see like, like w what your account is, right? Like, man, my account is, it's all right. But, man, I'm going to go do that. I, I'm, I'm going to go give some, some money to some, some poor people. I'm, I'm going to go, uh, I, I'm going to give some money in my church. I, I'm going to go serve at, at, at this place. I'm going to go tell this person about Jesus. And then you log him back in. He's like, oh, it's going up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I'm doing this every day. Look, because if we could do that, we get the wrong motives. Because it's not about what we're going to get. But at the end of the day, though, we are storing up treasure. We don't know what that's going to look like exactly, but it's going to be amazing. I know the Bible does talk about mansions in heaven, streets of gold, and amazing technology and stuff like we've never seen before. We're going to get to experience that, y'all. And so, and guess what? Guess how long that's going to last for? Forever. Forever. Everything here is like so short, and it's temporary, and it's gone, and just like Jesus said in these verses, like, it gets rusty and moths can come in and eat it and thieves can come and steal it. But in heaven, those eternal treasures, like, they're going to be able to be used forever. And so guess what? This week, y'all, there's some opportunities for you to store up some treasures in heaven. And you can't go to your app and see what's going to happen. You can't see any of that. But there's some opportunities right here at Crossover to, to serve. This Thursday night, we're going to be going to the neighborhood right over here on 15th Street. We're going to be giving away food um, to a bunch of people. Actually, the food we're giving away, you can't eat it, y'all. It's jerk hut. You get, get your own jerk hut. Uh, we're going to be giving away jerk hut to people in the neighborhood. Uh, we're going to have our, our stage out there. We're going to do a concert. Uh, my man Travis Doodle is bringing his ice cream truck. I mean, it's going to be a party out there. And uh, we got a bunch of artists from the church that are coming. And a uh, brother that was here at Flavor Fest, some of you may know who he is. He got a crazy testimony and story. Uh, he goes by the name of Gabbana. He's got millions of followers. He was out there doing crazy stuff on social media, went viral for it. Now he's following Jesus. He's like sold out for Jesus. And so he's coming. And the cool thing is like everybody in the neighborhood, in the hood, they know who Gabbana is because he was, he was a wild dude. And, uh, and he came to Flavor Fest. We went out in the neighborhood and did ministry, and everybody knew who he was. I mean, it was, it was a powerful ministry opportunity. So he's coming to be with us this Thursday night. It's going to be a party. So if you want to jump in on that, sign, in, sign up on the register page. Like, come out and be with us. We have affordable Christmas that's coming up uh, on Saturday. We're going to be hosting close to 100 families uh, here that are going to be able to come and shop for, for toys for their families at 10% of the actual retail price. And so they're going to feel like a hero. They got a great deal, but they're going to have some dignity. They got a little skin in the game. And we're just going to love on those people. It, it, there's so many things that are coming up at our church. There's so many opportunities for you to store up your treasure in heaven. That's the most important thing, y'all. That's the most important thing out there, period. And so next Sunday, y'all, winter wonderland. And we're bringing 10 tons of snow. So that's an opportunity for you to invite some friends, some family, anybody you know that has children up to fifth grade. Uh, that could be a great hook. But those kids are going to learn about Jesus. They're going to hear about Jesus in the gym before they go out and play in the snow. And we're going to be having a great service in here for all the families and adults that come. So there's opportunities for you to store up treasure in heaven right here with what our community is doing, what our church is doing. Amen?
And I know the Bible says, when you're faithful in little, God will bless you with a little more. And when you're faithful with that, Matthew chapter 25, God will bless you with a little more. You're faithful with that, God will bless you with a little more. So I want to ask you today, can God trust you with what you have right now? Because some of us haven't been doing that great even with what we have, and we're asking God for more. And he's like, just like our kids, those of us that are parents, our kids are doing terrible with money. They keep asking for more. We ain't giving them no more. You got to learn, right? Like, we, we talked about some tools today. Like, what are you doing with your finances to finish this year strong? I want you to take some inventory. I want you to look at, like, where am I at with my, with my budget, with, with my spending, with my investing, with my, with my giving, with my generosity? Where am I at in all those categories? Where am I at with my debt? Like, how can I do better in those areas? Don't wait until January. Work on it right now. You might save yourself thousands of dollars if you work on it right now before you go and do some crazy stuff in the next couple of weeks. Amen? I want to pray for you today. If you bow your heads around the room. Father, we come before you today. And God, we, we pause and we say, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the times that we haven't managed our money well, that we've spent it on things that we shouldn't have. And we didn't, we didn't ask you, we didn't talk to you, we didn't get any wise counsel from anybody else. All of us have made some financial mistakes, God, so we pause and we say sorry. All of us have gotten into debt at different points in our life. I pray for those that are here right now that might be feeling the weight of debt right now. I pray, God, that they'll get a solid plan and they'll stick to it. They'll get some accountability partners around them of some people that can push them to make the right decisions again and again. They didn't get in debt overnight, so it's not going to get out of it overnight. But, God, with your help and with self-discipline, um, they can do it. They could be financially free. So, God, give them the wisdom. Give them, give them the tenacity to take those steps, do what they need to. God, for those that haven't been giving, haven't been generous, God, and they've been holding back, God, I pray that they'll open up their hearts and they'll, they'll give to your work. They'll give to others. They'll be generous. They'll be open-handed. And realize that when we give, God, you, you give back to us. You take care of us. You're generous. Just as scripture says, as we refresh others, you refresh us. So God, I pray for my family today. God, I want to see them be financially strong, financially free. And God, I pray even today as we have an opportunity to close this service out and have an action step and, and give right now towards your work. God, I pray you'll just help us to trust you. Help us to trust you and we're going to watch you show up and do miracles. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. Come on, give it up for Jesus today. Yeah. So we're going to end with an action step today. We're talking about finances and giving and putting God first. So here's an opportunity for you to put God first and give your regular offerings, your tithes. Uh, if you want to give to the rebrand offering, they're going to put the ways to give up on the screen. Most of you guys know them. You can give through the crossover app. Um, you can give through the website. If you want to give physically, we don't pass a bucket around anymore. You can just drop it in the drop box back there. There's some envelopes. But thank you guys for your generosity. And I know there's going to be some incredible stories as people begin to trust God and do the things they should. And so how many of y'all ready to finish strong? Y'all ready? So as you guys are giving today, if you haven't given already, uh, we have a brother from the church right here that, man, he's going to help us finish strong. He's going to get you guys fired up today to, to give strong, to be strong, to be financially fit. This brother's strong right here. He used to be in the WWE, if you didn't know. Uh, he is a professional power lifter as well. And I'm just super proud of him, the gifts and talents God has put inside of him. Uh, he recently signed a record deal with God Over Money. And with Menace Movement, he just came out with a brand new album like a few weeks ago. And, man, hundreds of thousands of people are listening to it already. And so we're going to show him a little bit of love today. He's going to help us finish strong. Come on, y'all show some love for our very own Monster Tarver. Give it up for him. Yo. Thank you. What's up, bro? How's everybody doing? I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm going to need some room. See, I lifted that with one hand. <laughs> the world today, <laughs> y'all laughing at me? <laughs> the world today has its war cry. Its war cries are identity politics, 
racial politics, everything in between, trying to transform you into a machine. Ooh, that rhyme, bars. Trying to turn you into a drone, trying to turn you into anything that can turn you against the creator to convince you that you are your own creator. The world has its own war cry, but guess what? So do we. I just released an album a couple weeks ago called The War of Art. It's a flip on the art of war, the war of art meaning as a warrior in the kingdom of the Lord, God gave me a calling and a talent, two different things that run congruently together. The talent is that he gave me the ability to rap really, really well, if I might say so myself. But he gave me the gift to be obedient, to stand up in front of his kingdom, my fellow brothers and sisters, and share that gift. And in that war of art, I stand here alongside all of you in that war against the art trying to con all of us into machines, robots, and drones. So today I'm gonna perform, no, I'm gonna share my song called War Cry. But all I need you to do is say one word, hey. And I want you to say it as loud as you possibly can. So when I say hit them with the war cry, all you have to say is, hey. Y'all ready? Hit them with the war cry. With the war cry. With the war cry. With the war cry. Hit them with the war cry. I think they're ready. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You can get up if you want to. You can come through. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go ahead, so we're going to finish the church. We're going to finish with some energy. Let's go. I'm a monster, not a god. To spit the gospel till it's odd. But I'm a child. But like I'm in the helicopter, eating lobster. It was written like it's Nas. I know the mom, but let's go. Hit him with the war cry. Even if the song cry, even if they come and we all die, hit them with the war cry. Even if we on fire, they gon' see the Lord and we gon' rise. Hit them with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry. Hit them with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry. Hit them with the war cry. I'm a problem, like a rose from a concrete I'm a blossom, and I'm up next, batter up, but it's Gotham If you send the wrong pitch, better use caution Playing with the word, cause you rich, but you godless Really on a reset, acting like you ballin' And they rushing in, trying to rule, but they stallin' And I dropped the signal, but I found my calling. And I got bars, I'ma eat like I'm starving. And I got my son on the track, and we marching. And I'm in the jungle, teeing off the monsters So I wish a tiger would, you can say I'm golfing This one got that KB energy, I'm yelling Tomorrow we gon' live, but today we rebelling And I'm in my zone, in a ring, like a wedding Like the bridegroom to the king up in heaven I'm a monster, not a god To spit the gospel till it's odd Word, I'm a chopper Like I'm in the helicopter Eating lobster It was written like it's Nas I know the ready? monster Let's go. Hit him with the war cry Even if the song cry Even if they come and we all die Hit him with the war cry Even if we on fire They gon' see the Lord and we gon' rise Hit him with the war cry with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, hit him with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, it's with the war cry, and I know somebody in the world gonna attack me, trying to be a fisher of the men, what I'm catching, you a catfish, bait and switch when you acting, always got a line by the pole when you rapping, God at the top of the dome, ain't no capping, always on my mind when I speak, I'm reacting, and I rock with Ben, so Satan and they pack it. Two of the best rappers alive, don't at me. And I got time, homie, I'm about to clock him. Killing off your own, then get angry at a cop when any shot fired in the hood, we cannot win. Following fake organizations and they doctrine. Ain't nobody scared here, I'm about to go off. And I got the favor of the Lord, I'm gonna show off. Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, I got more of it. They my only fans, they don't want to see my clothes off huh. I'm a monster, not a god To spit the gospel till it's odd Word, I'm a child, but like I'm in the helicopter Eating lobster, it was written like it's Nas I know the monster, let's go Hit him with the war cry Even if the 
if the storm cry, even if they come and we all die, hit them with the war cry. Even if we on fire, they gon' see the Lord and we gon' rise. Hit them with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry. Hit them with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry. Hit them with the war cry, war cry, war cry, war cry. And we gon' do it one more time for the kingdom. Y'all ready? Hit him with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry. Hit him with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry, with the war cry. Hit him with the war cry. Hey, praise God. Y'all give it up for Monster Tarver. I'm not getting ready to do that. <laughs> All right, come on, y'all. Let's thank God for the message today, the word that we heard that God used to challenge all of us in a significant way. We're getting ready to go home in just a moment, but I want to make sure that you heard some of the announcements because we really need uh, you to respond accordingly. So everybody do me a favor. Uh, open up your phones to the Crossover app. If you have the Crossover app, open up your phones to the Crossover app. If you don't have the Crossover app, I'm going to ask you to go to your browser really quickly and go to crossoverchurch.org and go to the register page. Need everybody to do that really fast, please, if you don't mind. Uh, that's going to help us tremendously so that I don't have to repeat all of what you already heard. But inevitably, somebody is going to reach out to the church this week and say, now, what did y'all say on Sunday? Well, I'm getting ready to help you right now. <laughs> I'm going to make it very, very clear. All right? Once you got it, say, I got it. All right, if you need more time, say, wait, please. Those of you that said, wait, please, have an Android. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> y'all knew I was going to go there. You knew I was going to go there. Amen. Just joking. All right, seriously, all jokes aside, here's what I need you to do. I need you to look at that register page uh, or look at the app, and you'll see um, everything that Pastor Tommy mentioned in his message, and that I'm just going to quickly remind you of. It is on the register page, and please don't just see the announcement and be like, oh, that's nice that they're doing that. No, we need you to sign up and help us to serve, uh, serve in our community this week, both for our outreach on Thursday, um, as well as we've got uh, Affordable Christmas. We've got Winter Wonderland that's going to be happening next week and all of those kinds of things. Uh, to those of you that are visiting with, the, with us for the first time today um, as a guest, as a VIP, we're very honored and excited that you're here today. I'm holding a yellow bag, and what I'm going to ask you to do after this service is over with, if you'll go right to the center of our lobby, there's some smiling faces that are ready to greet you there. Uh, they're going to give you a connection card. It's going to take you about three and a half minutes to fill that connection card out. They're going to give you this bag, and then also we're going to follow up with you this week, and we just want to let you know that we appreciate you for being here. We're going to love on you and all that kind of good stuff, so if you'll do that right after this service is over with. I'd much appreciate that. You heard Pastor Tommy mention that for those of you that are 1099 employees, now listen, if you're not a 1099 employee, this message is not for you. This announcement is for, not for you. If you don't know what that is, then God bless you. Amen. But for those of you that are 1099 employees, uh, in classroom number one, everybody say classroom number one. In classroom number one, we'll have some folks that will be there uh, that are going to give you some information today uh, in terms of uh, the uh, COVID and all those kinds of things that happened during that time period and how you might be able to qualify for some of those return funds. So please, you can go right outside those doors right there to my left, your right, and they'll be glad to, uh, to welcome you there. Again, Thursday night, we'll be doing this, uh, the outreach from 5.30 to 8 o'clock. Um, next Sunday, as Pastor Tommy mentioned, we've got Winter Wonderland. We need more volunteers, even if you don't serve in the kids' ministry beyond that, uh, you can be a part of that. And then also, listen, we want to invite you, please, on social media, those of you that are on Instagram, on Facebook, please go to our social media and reshare the Winter Wonderland, Wonderland flyer. We're going to also be giving you some as you leave today, uh, some physical ones, and you can share that with other kids and families and, <clears throat> and invite them uh, to come and be a part of that. Uh, but please share it on social media, on all platforms with Crossover 813. Everybody say that, Crossover 813. Yep. Finally, finally, if you um, have uh, not done or completed your Christmas shopping, but you're looking for some cool gifts, we've got a sale going on in the hip-hop shop that you can go right there after this service is over with. And then uh, I said finally, I got one more announcement. I'm so sorry. Um, 
the, the final two Sundays of this year, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, are both on Sundays. Just so that everybody is on the same page, we are keeping with our same two services for both of those days, okay? So you don't have to worry about another separate service or, you know, all of those kinds of things. Uh, we've got the two same services, 10 o'clock and 11 and 45 at those, uh, on those days. And that's a lot of announcements. Jesus. Woo. Lord have mercy. I felt like I just preached myself. No, come on, stand up with me, please. We get ready to go home. Amen? All right. How many of y'all enjoyed yourselves today? Amen. Make sure you take the information and actually apply it to your life, all right? They're going to put our mission statement on the screen. This is how we leave every single Sunday. Clear, visible reminder of what God calls us to be and do as we leave his house headed toward our own home. So on the count of three, let's read it together. One, two, three. Our mission is to empower people to discover, develop, and display Jesus Christ in every area of your lives. Before you leave, if you don't know somebody's name as you pass by them today, Introduce yourself and say hello, all right? Have a good day, everybody. God bless you. Talking clown, dark, switching on my ways, had to get my mind right. Gotta be hot and cold, can't straddle the line, no. Fishing for these souls, I'm ready to find one. Calling on the Lord, he coming on time, no. Left the 99, hey Jason? let's double the run. Can I borrow you for a quick second? I I used to pull Please. a key. Now I'm covered by the blood, put it on the door, all the They like cross, where you been? I've been praying, coast to coast, for the kingdom, do the most. When he send me, I'm a go. Say you strap with your iron, that's a semi auto, bro. It's a fully loaded clip, 66 is what I told. Plenty word for them demons, and I'm aiming at their throat. Clean the blood in my house, we cover everywhere we go. This ain't no ordinary flow, I bless the mic so wipe your nose. I'm anointed and I love the Lord. Everybody yeah, know everybody spread the word know. around the world. This here more than doing shows. Oh, Gotta switch show. your life up. Your life. That's the only way That's you grow. Way you Switching up my ways ahead to get my mind right. All about the kingdom, it ain't about the limelight. What would you do for Jesus? I ain't talking clown dice. Switching up my ways ahead to get my mind right. Gotta be hot and cold, can't straddle the line. No fishing for these souls, I'm ready to find. Son, wanted the limelight with them sound bites. I thought the Lord cut my winning books like he playing jokers in them dark nights. Was a little wheezy trying to make it rain. Out of steam like a broken train. Only doing music just to entertain. Now I'm leading people to the cane. Look, had to refrain from distractions. Wanted attention just for satisfaction. Recognize life really more simplified when God saw my infractions. Get the math, put it on tracks. Life a marathon, I'm just running laps on the Peloton, burning calories and spiritually I'm burning fat. Giving the burdens that held me down, pulling me deep like I'm fitting the drown. Now I swim in blessings with victory Cause it's grace abounds We born to win, ain't fitting to lose Life or death, what you fitting to choose Never been perfect, but always progressing But still, people want to put us on snooze Switching up yeah. my ways ahead to get my mind right All about the kingdom, it ain't about the limelight What would you do for Jesus? I ain't talking Klondike Switching up my ways ahead to get my mind right Gotta be hot and cold, can't straddle the line, no Fishing for these souls, I'm ready to find one Calling on the Lord, he coming on time, though Left the 99, that's double the run, though
know you saw Joseph's coat, but peep mine real quick. Let's ride. Oh, that we cut on the side. Devil ain't win, but he shot it shy. Been in the field, had to earn my shots. Ain't got time to wait. Go. Holy water, no fame. Go. But by strikes, he made it right. Put on my bird, bird. Inside a system that never did love you, what you gonna say? How can we be so blind? This is where I'm crossing the line. 
this in my time. I'll speak to the people that think it's okay to see black folk die. What if your son died and they told you, Mama, don't cry? Please enough off of the lie. God, I see the other side. God, I want them all alive. God, I want them all alive. Welcome to the other side. I live my life like it's my only night. Who you gon' run to in your darkest times? Good for the body, you good for the soul, you keeping me full. 